Welcome. Today we're going to talk about playing fetch with Deluge. Our agenda for today, we're going to talk about basics of fetching records. We're going to talk about the fetch record syntax. And then we're going to talk about some use cases and examples. So basics of fetching records. What are records? Well, records are the data that is entered into a form. Utilizing Deluge to fetch data, we follow the traditional data handling process known as CRUD. Create, read, update, and delete. Here is a visual representation of what records look like. So what does it mean to fetch a record? Well, forms contain records or data. The form or table is stored in a relational database. Deluge provides an easy wrapper called a collection variable for processing that data. And that collection variable holds one or more records fetched from a form. And this is based on a given criteria. So why fetch records? Well, applications need to manipulate data. And in order for you to manipulate that data, first you need to fetch it. Looking up information, storing it, making calculations, all that it's involved after fetching the records. Fetching data is necessary to interact with it and make it useful. The fetch record syntax. The fetch record syntax looks like this. We have the collection variable on the left side, equal sign, the form name which we're gonna fetch the records from, and then we have the criteria. Let's look at some use cases and examples. Static fetching. Here's an example of static fetching. We have a table with some records on there. We're gonna use the email, and we're gonna use a fetch command to fetch the records for Steve Rogers' name. Here's how that looks. We have the employee info as our data type collection variable. We have employees as our form link name. And then for the criteria, we're telling it to fetch any record has an email value equal to that email address on the screen. After we do that fetch command, we reference our fetch variable in this form. We write out our collection variable we put a dot and then the field of the record we're trying to pull. Here's some static fetching output. We have a function that fetches the record with the email address. And then we info it out, giving us the result on the bottom of the screen. The name, Steve Rogers. Now what happens when we fetch with a field that has two of the same values? So you can see on the screen, there's a table with some records. And the field with PTO days remaining, there's two records with the same value of 21. Here's an example of what would happen. In this case, we are fetching the PTO days remaining equals to 21. So every record that matches that criteria will be pulled as a result. If you look at the bottom of the screen, we get both records. But what we do get, it's not the actual value 21. We get the unique identifier, the record ID. Now let's talk about fetching with creator's ID. Creator generates a unique ID for every record added. This makes it easy for users to edit a specific record through scripting. Here's an example. Let's talk about driver's licenses. You see, there might be multiple people with the same name, maybe even the same date of birth. But what makes a unique driver's license would be the unique driver's license number. You can look at this as a unique identifier that creator generates for every single record added. 
If you look at this table, you see that the bottom two records are exactly the same. This is what we see. Now this is what creator sees. If you look at the very bottom of that table, you see the same two records. But now we are actually seeing a third value. The last column on the right side shows the unique identifier, the record ID the creator makes for us. As you can see, it is different for both those records. That's what helps us identify each. Now let's look at fetching with creator IDs. Now we're going to use a creator ID to fetch a C. Rogers name. Here's how that will look. We have the collection variable, employee info. Then after the equal signs, we tell it to pull that record from the employees table where the ID is equal to the unique identifier. We info out that specific value and the results are Steve Rogers, as you can see on the bottom of the screen. Now let's talk about aggregating records. So here's the aggregating record syntax. So Creator provides us some cool little functions that we can aggregate or add at the very end of a fetch command. These aggregate records functions allows us to do certain operations a lot faster. Here are some of the examples on the screen. So here's an example of using the aggregate function of the average. We have a table with certain records and on the very right side, the last column shows the PTAO days remaining. So what is the average of these records? What is the average of those specific numbers on the last field? Well, this is how we can get that number by using the aggregate average function. So we have our collection variable called PTO AVG for average. It's equal to the employees table. And then we tell it to get every single record by using ID not equal to zero. But after that, we put a period and then we type out the average aggregate function. That is AVG, and within parentheses, we enter the name of the field which contains the records we want to get the average on. In this case, we execute the function and we get the result on the bottom 19.2. Now let's talk about sorting records fetching and sorting syntax. So besides just fetching records, we can also sort the results by a specific field. And we can do that by sorting them in ascending or descending order. And then on top of that, we also have a range. So even if we get a specific number of results, we can tell it to provide to us only a specific range. Sorting. We have the ability to sort results in ascending or descending order by alphabetical, chronological, and numeric. By default, the records will be sorted in ascending order. Range. The X and the Y values are called indexes. Zero is the first record in the list. The ranges enable you to limit the records fetch within the start index and the end index. As an example, if you wanted to see only the results for the first 150 records, we will put range from 1 to 150. Fetching and sorting output. So we have an example of a fetch records. We're sorting by the email address in ascending order and we're, get, we're getting only the first 100 results. Now, in order for us to see every single one or every single result on that fetch, we use a for loop. This helps us iterate through every single record that's stored in that collection variable and info it out to the screen. Here's a visual representation of that.
The script will give you the 100 most recent records created in your application. We're giving it a range from 0 to 100. The first number specifies where to start the fetch. 0 means the first record. The second number specifies the limit of where to stop the fetch. 100 means it will fetch up to the 100th record. Looping and updating. Here is the looping syntax. We use the for each loop. For each item or record in a form, subform, or list under a specific criteria, perform a certain action. So looping through our records. In this case, we have a fetch command to get every single record from the employees table and storing that in the employee info collection variable. Then we use a for each loop to iterate through every single record in that collection variable. And as we do that, we info out the name value. When we look at the results, you can see that every single name gets infoed out. The updating record syntax. This is how updating a record gets done. We specify the collection variable containing the record. We put a period and the field name of that record which we want to assign a new value to. Updating all the records. In this case, we have a fetch command getting every single record in the employees table. Then we're iterating through every single record and then updating the PTO days remaining field to equal 20. Before the update, this is how that table will look. As you can see, on the right side, the PTO days remaining values are all different. After the update, you can see that every single field on that right side gets updated to the number 20. Fetching from a lookup field. This is how a lookup field will look in a visual representation. What is being displayed in this case is the actual name, something we can read. But what is the lookup actually doing? Well, in the back end, what it actually does, it's, it uses a record ID. You can see that by the way we info out that department lookup and the results that we get. Now the art of the double fetch. If we wanted to get the actual name of the lookup, the actual readable value to us, we would have to do a double lookup. As you can see on the screen, we get the record that has the email address equal to Steve that are not a real email.com and after we get that result we fetch again for the department when we info it out we actually get a readable result now some key takeaways fetches are how you manipulate records in creator fetches follow the following format form link name and the comparison criteria. It is good form for your comparison to always be between unique values like ID or an email. When you fetch records, you can also perform aggregate functions on the group of records you fetch. Fetches support being ordered in ascending or descending order of a field value. And you can also set a maximum limit of records fetch using a range. After you fetch a record, you can loop through all your records using a for loop and your fetch variable. You can also update records through a fetch using the fetch variable name that field link name format. And lookup fields use creator IDs for values, so you need to do a double fetch 
in order to get the information that you want. Thank you. I hope you found this video very educational.